solar flares are unnerving already, but a new study now found that our sun is probably capable of super flares that are vastly more powerful than any flares we've seen so far. How did they find out and how much do we need to worry? Let's have a look. Solar flares are giant eruptions of plasma from the sun's surface that blast particles and radiation out into space. Sometimes Earth is in their way. The radiation and the particles then rain down on us and can cause satellite malfunctions as well as trouble with the electric grids. The biggest solar flare that we have on record was the 1859 Carrington event. Many people back then reported auroras over Europe and the United States and disruptions of telegraph systems. At the time of the Carrington event, two measurement stations in England were keeping track of the magnetic field on Earth. Those devices worked by pushing an inked pen around on paper, and during the peak of the storm, that pen just ran off the page. So no one really knows exactly how strong the Carrington event was, but it's been estimated to have had about 10 to the 32 ergs of energy. I have no idea what that means either, but in everyday units, that's roughly the energy of 100 billion Hiroshima nuclear bombs. The solar flare from May this year, which you may remember, has been estimated to have had about a tenth of the energy of the Carrington event. A super flare now is at least 100 times stronger still than the Carrington event, so that's 10 trillion Hiroshima nuclear bombs and up. We don't have any records of these, so for this new study, the researchers set out to estimate the frequency of such super flares from looking at other stars like our Sun. They use data from NASA's Kepler Space Telescope. The Kepler mission ran from 2009 to 2018 and broke grounds with its discovery of exoplanet. But Kepler looked for exoplanets by the slight dimming that the planets would cause as they transit in front of a Sun. So in directly Kepler collected a lot of data about other suns. For the new study now, the researchers looked at 56,000 stars similar to our own sun. They found almost 3,000 super flares in the observations for which they estimate the size and frequency. They find that the relation between the energy and frequency is similar to that observed in our sun. It's a power law. The larger the flares, the fewer of them happen. But here's the kicker the bigger flares are more frequent than expected. You see this summarized in this figure. You see the bold green line? That's the data from the Sun. It just stops at some highest value. That's the Carrington event because we have no records of bigger flares. This dashed green line is the power law that fits this. This is how scientists previously expected the frequency and energy to be related. This orange curve here, that's the new data. You can see that this exceeds the expectation. They estimate the frequency of superflares to be one in a century. There's one caveat that I must mention here, which is that solar flares are usually a combination of radiation and particles from a coronal mass ejection. The particles are the more dangerous part, but these observations of stars only tell you the radiation. So what does this mean? There are two possibilities. One is that our sun is, for unknown reasons, much more well-behaved than the average star of this type. The other possibility is that we've been extremely lucky so far. Going by these observations, it certainly looks like stars of the same type as our sun can produce superflares. What would happen if a superflare hit Earth? It'd be really bad news for Elon Musk because chances are a lot of satellites will be damaged and possibly get out of control. So in the aftermath, we'd probably see space debris build up rapidly with the occasional chance of trash rain. That wouldn't be all of it. It's highly likely that a lot of old transformers would go boom and we'd see blackouts all over the place. I don't even want to think about what might happen to supercomputer centers. Damages have been estimated to be trillions of dollars already for a Carrington-like event. And that doesn't account for the damage to living things. 
Earth's magnetic field can cope with a flare 100 times the Carrington event, but the larger the flare, the more of the stuff will get through and rain directly down on us. You know, I'd really like to know what the tail of this distribution looks like. Oh wait, maybe I don't want to know. At the very least, the auroras would be glorious. Yes, the universe is a scary place, but that's no reason to be scared of science itself. If there's something you think you'll never understand, maybe you just haven't found a good way to learn it. If that is so, I recommend you check out Brilliant. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. I found it to be very effective to learn something new. It really gives you a feeling for what's going on and helps you build general problem-solving skills. They cover a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on differential equations or large language models. And they're adding new courses each month. It's a fast and easy way to learn, and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with their course on quantum computing or differential equations. And of course, I have a special offer for users of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Bina, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.